it. I'm sorry about the lighting, but this is part three of the New England. Vermont Institute of National Sci Natural Science. The Vermont In Institute of Natural Science Nature Center is just outside of tiny Woodstock. It is the leading New England care center for injured raptures. Raptors, owls, falcons, hawks, eagles, and vultures, about 25 species in all that can no longer survive in the wild. The center receives birds from all over the United States and houses them in specifically adapted high ceiling cages. Guests can enjoy bird watching along the center's picturesque nature falls. While in Woodstock, don't overlook the Billings Farm and Museum, a working dairy farm since the 1870s. Next door is the Marsh Billings Rockefeller National Historic Park. Vermont's first national park offers guide tours of the Marsh Billings Rockefeller Mansion and its grounds and gardens. Left, bald eagles are among the birds of prey cared for in the Vermont Institute of Natural Science Nature Center. Above, visitors to the center can see raptors such as this great gray owl. That's the bald eagle I was talking about. And then there's, there's the owl. Harvard Square. Harvard Square in Cambridge, Massachusetts is a great place to go if you want to feel young, hip, and smart. Teaming with Harvard professors, students, and wannabes, the square can give visitors the sense that they are attending Harvard without the inconvenience of having to take exams. The center of Harvard Square is a former subway kiosk converted into a Harvard-worthy newsstand. The kiosk is surrounded by steps leading down to what is called the Pit, a, po a pocket-sized park. Restaurant so shops and what may be the highest density of bookstores in the United States fill the remainder of the square. The square wasn't always just a hangout. In 1630, it was the village of Newtown, the first planned settlement in the Anglo-North America. Newtown Street Plan remains in use today, as do buildings that date from the early 1700s. Um, this is this is the picture, and the description that it says is an old subway kiosk now converted to a noteworthy newsstand stands at the center of Harvard Square. Freedom Trail. Follow the red brick line along the 2.5 mile Freedom Trail in Boston and you'll be able to take in 300 years of American history. The 16 sites along the trail describes the city's early patriots, their notion of liberty, and the journey of independence. The idea for the Freedom Trail came in 1958 from William, S William Scottsfield, who was an editorial writer for the Boston Herald Traveler. He hatched the idea of creating a marked line that would transform Boston's maze light streets into something that tourists could follow. His campaign succeeded and inspired other trails, including the Constitutional Walking Tour of Philadelphia and Boston's Black Heritage Trail. The Freedom Trail begins at the Boston Common near the Boston Public Garden. Boston Common is one of the nation's oldest public parks, and it has a long-standing tradition as a place where demonstrators can exercise their right to freedom of speech without needing a permit. The 500-acre park was a British troop encampment during the American Revolution and hosted hangings until 1817. Today, Bostonians prefer to think of the park as the centerpiece of the city's emerald necklace chain of parks. From there, the trail moves to the Massachusetts State House Park Street Church and the Grary Building Burying Ground, where John Hancock, Samuel Adams, and Paul Revere are buried. It continues on to sites including the Paul Revere House, the Old South Meeting House, where Adams signaled the start of the Boston Tea Party, and Bunker Hill Monument, where the ragged colonials held off the British Army. The Freedom Trail ends as the at the USS Constitution, which became known as Old Ironsides during the War of 1812. And that's the boat. Paul Revere's house is the oldest building in downtown Boston. It opened in 1908 to the general public and is one of the first museums in the United States to be situated in a historic home. And that's the house. Fenway Park. Fenway Park reigns as a temple of baseball, despite the decades of misfortune for its principal occupant, the Boston Red Sox. 
Built in 1912, Fenway is not only Major League Baseball's oldest park, but also its most eccentric. The stadium's capacity is just over 36,108 people, a few of whom can a few of whom can now sit on top of the landmark Green Monster, the 37-foot wall in left field. The right field foul pole is known in Boston as Pesky's Pole because in, in the 1940s, weak-hitting shortstop Johnny Pesky hit one of his few home runs just beyond it. Between 1918 and 2003, Fenway didn't see a title, but Boston fans were finally rewarded and the ghosts were exercised in 2004 when the Red Sox won the World Series. And that's Fenway Park. Boston's Children's Museum. A 40-foot high red and white wooden milk bottle marks the entrance to the Boston Children's Museum, where hands-on discovery and uninhibited experimentation are found on four floors of fun. The museum's centerpiece is the New Balance Climb, an elaborate three-story scaparole maze of brightly painted towers, colorful tubes, and wobbly walkways. Other educational and fun attractions include the science playground where children learn about physics by pushing golf balls down an intricate set of wooden tracks, make gigantic soap bubbles, and climb underneath oversized aquariums to observe turtles from a fresh perspective, kid power where children learn about leading healthy active lives. Kids can climb the walls and literally light up a dance floor. Play space, an area for preschoolers and toddlers that has a treehouse with hidden pathways and a messy area with a see-through painting wall. The famous 40-foot high hood milk bottle greets visitors at the entrance of the Boston Children's Museum. The bottle actually houses a snack stand. And there's kind of a picture of the hood milk bottle and it has the little camera which means that it's great for the little kiddos.